All right, thank you for that, Brandon. New information tonight about another potential investigation by New York's Anti-Corruption Commission. A report coming out tonight says the Moreland Commission issued subpoenas to the state Senate Republican Campaign Committee and the state Independence Party. Joining us now is our political analyst, New York Post state editor Fred Dicker. And Fred, coming from a, uh, a Democratic uh, governor's office and the commission that was formed by him, some people probably raising their eyebrows here. Well, the AP story was very disturbing, Jerry, in that it said that no subpoenas were issued to the Democratic Party for its housekeeping account. Now, it could be this commission has some specific information dealing with the Republicans, dealing with the uh, Independence Party that they're looking at. One would hope it's well-intentioned. But I've noted here uh, over the last few weeks that there is a sense around that this Moreland Commission, Jerry, doesn't know what it's doing, that it's on a fishing expedition. It's reaching here, it's reaching there, it's fighting with the legislature. And, of course, the context is the governor, by every account, is gearing up now for his re-election campaign next year. If it turns out that this is a partisan effort, a witch hunt, just to try to find something on the opposition party, then I think this could uh, redound to the governor's disadvantage. It could blow up in Governor Cuomo's face. And, Fred, you've been saying right along, too, that, you know, despite what the public sees and thinks sometimes, you don't feel that there's really widespread corruption here to begin with. That's correct, Jerry. I think there are isolated cases, generally New York City legislators who are corrupt individuals, but I don't see yet any evidence of genuine systemic corruption where in the system itself there's an inherent corruption that's uh, breaking the law. If that was the case, in my view, we would see more indictments. These uh, federal prosecutors and some uh, county uh, district attorneys would be more than happy to get the publicity and take the action if they could find evidence of real crimes. Is there still, uh, I don't know, a, a, a formative process going on with the Moreland Commission? You said it seems like they don't really know which way they're heading. Is there still a, a steering committee, perhaps, or have they just kind of been thrown into it and said go? Well, no, there is a steering committee of some 24 members, mostly DAs, including some uh, people from this area, DA up in Warren County, for instance. Some prominent people are involved, but these are people, they're DAs. If they had evidence of crimes, they should have taken action to begin with, and they didn't. Many of them themselves are conflicted. They get contributions from lawyers who appear before their office. They have their own potential embarrassment, as does the governor, who's got $30 million in the bank. And we know that didn't come from people who thought they were contributing to charity. Many of the givers think they're going to get something in return. So it seems to me the governor and this Moreland Commission is in a difficult position. It's a kind of a dangerous time for politicians. They're desperately searching around for something to justify their existence. If they find it, it might be something good for the public to expose it. But if they don't, I think they, and in particular the governor, is going to be very embarrassed. All right. Well, I know we'll stay on top of it. Thank you, Fred. Sure. And don't forget, you can hear Fred's radio program live from the state capitol every weekday morning, 10 to 11 on Talk, 1300 AM.